Hi YouTube, it's Kathy, and I'm here to talk to you about a slight problem I have. I mean, it's a good problem to have, but it's also not great. Because ebooks aren't a physical thing that I can hold or put in my house somewhere so that I see it and go, oh god, I need to read that, I sometimes sort of forget about them. And this means that there are a number of ebooks on my phone, on my Kindle app, that either came from NetGalley or I've purchased and just haven't read. So the point of this video is to go through all of those ebooks as a public acknowledgement of the fact that I haven't read them yet. Also get some of your opinions on them. If there's anything on this list that you really want me to read, let me know. And I'm going to be concentrating on trying to read as many of these as possible in the month of April, especially because I will be traveling this month, so it will make a lot of sense to try to get some of these done when I shouldn't be carrying around physical books. Does this mean I won't buy any books while I'm in the UK? Probably not, but I'm going to try not to buy that many because I only travel with hand luggage. Like I mentioned, some of these are from NetGalley, so they may or may not even have a cover on my app, which makes it even more interesting as to try to figure out what the heck they are. If I know anything about these books, I will let you know. A lot of them, I'm going to assume I don't. I'm going to do this alphabetically. There are a couple of books in here that I'm pretty sure are connected to each other, but We'll figure it out when we get there. The first book on my list is Above All Else. I literally have no idea what this is. There's no cover on it. I can tell you it comes out this year and it's by Dana Allison Levy. I think that this might have been the one about kids or young adults climbing Mount Everest, maybe? After that we have Again But Better, which is a book that was very big on booktube last year because it was written by a booktuber who I'm not familiar with, and I got it just so I could see what the hype was about, although I've seen people being like, it's great, it's not great. Since I have no skin in this game, I've kind of just forgotten about it because I don't really need to read it immediately. Next we have another book without a cover, which is called The Best Lies. Let me see if I can open it up. It is by Sarah Liu, and I have no idea what this one is about. Fortunately for you, you're going to get covers because I'll look them up while making this video, but me currently, I, I got nothing. Next we have one where I can see the cover and that's called Boyfriend Material by Alexis Hall. This is an upcoming book about a guy and another guy and a fake to real relationship trope and that's all I know and that's all I want to know because I think it's going to be hecka cute. After that we have a book called Callahan by Anita Wright and this was a book that somebody reached out to me and wanted to know if I wanted to do a review on it, like they sent me a free copy, but it was also free on Kindle at the time, so I figured I wouldn't say yes to doing the free review like immediately because then I feel like I'd have to fit it into my reading plans at that exact moment, but I got the free copy of it so that eventually one day maybe I will do that review because I at least wrap up everything I read, so there's that. Next we have Crooked Hallelujah. It also doesn't have a cover, which is not helpful. It is by Kelly Jo Ford. And again, I, uh, I don't know anything about this. The thing is I don't indiscriminately just go, hey, NetGalley, give me whatever you'll give me. I do look at the synopses before I request a book to make sure it's something I'm actually interested in. But does that mean I'm gonna remember the synopses after the fact? Not necessarily. I also have A Danger to Herself and Others by Alyssa Shenmi. This was a book that I meant to read last year because it was one of the picks for the BookNet Fest book club, and I think I ended up not reading it because I didn't quite have time and or I knew that I wouldn't be able to go to that book club meetup anyway because I had something else. I was either on another panel or moderating another panel at the time, so I knew that I wasn't gonna get to talk to people about it anyway, so I could put it off to whenever. I also have Darling Rose Gold. Mostly what I know about this is it seems to be based off true events, but doesn't actually tell you that it's based off true events. And it's something to do with a mother, daughter, murder, something. I actually have no idea. I also have the Dead Girls Club. I honestly believe that this was a title slash cover by because I don't know anything about this. Ditto on Dear Edward. I would have read the synopsis at the time, but I don't know what it's about. We also have Dear Wife, which funnily enough is a book that I saw when I was in New Brunswick visiting my family and went, that book looks familiar. I feel like somebody's talked about it and I feel like I should buy it. And then I realized I already had it on my Kindle. So now I have two versions of it. Still haven't read it in either version. Next we have Definitely Maybe Yours. I believe this is kind of a coffee shop romance type of thing. This is by an author who I actually met at Geek Girl Con a couple of years ago and we still follow each other on social media so I want to eventually get around to reading her book. I believe this is the beginning of a trilogy. We also have Gin Patrol on the purple line. Basically the title was enough for me to go, yes, I would like to read that please. Then we have Eight Kinky Nights, which is a female-female Hanukkah erotica sub-dom 
something or other. I meant to read it during the holiday season, get it, didn't get around to it, we'll probably wait until the next holiday season. Another book with no cover is Every Reason We Shouldn't by Sarah Fujimara. No idea. We also have The Frame Up by Megan Scott Moulin. No cover, no idea. We have Frankenstein, which I believe is a retelling of Frankenstein. We have The Furies by Kate Lowe. No idea what it's about. We have The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. I asked for this because I loved Station Eleven, so I'm just hoping I'm going to love this as well, but I don't actually know anything about it because I like to go into things not knowing too much, which is part of the reason I don't know about anything to do with most of the books I'm talking about right now. Next we have The Gravity of Us. I believe this is by Phil Stamper and this is a YA about these two boys that are either at NASA camp or their parents work for NASA or something like that. And I believe it's a romance and I believe Nobody actually goes into space, but it's a space adjacent type of thing. Next we have The Henna Wars, and I know that Sajed is really looking forward to reading this one. I'm looking forward to reading this one. I know it's female-female and has a multicultural cast, so I'm in. Next we have Hurry Home by Roz Ney. This is a thriller, and that's all I remember. I don't like to go into thrillers knowing literally anything, so that makes sense that I don't remember at all. Next we have I Was Told It Would Get Easier by Abby Waxman. I recently read The Bookish Life of Nina Hill and really, really enjoyed it, so I'm really hoping that this has a similar writing style. Next we have If I Go Missing and it doesn't have a cover and it doesn't have an author right on it which makes it just feel like this is a file that I put my phone in case I go missing which is creeping me out a little bit. Next we have Incendiary. I believe this is Zoraida Cordova and I really enjoy her writing so I'm not sure why I haven't read this because it's out of sight out of mind that's why. Next we have The Little Bookshop on the Seine. I love bookish books which is why I asked for this one. We have Lizzie which is about Lizzie Bennet which is a whole story I'd love to learn more about and I'm fascinated by the fact that there is a resurgence of retellings about this trial. I also have Lock Every Door by Riley Sager, which I know a little bit about. It's about this person who's house sitting in this very fancy apartment building, but she's not allowed to have guests over and she's not allowed to leave and it's a thriller and I'm here for it. Next I have Loki and I'm pretty sure that this is by Mackenzie Lee and I think that's the only reason why I ask for it because I love Mackenzie Lee. Next I also have The Lonely Fajita, which just looked contemporary and adorable and I wanted it. Next we have The Major's Welcome Home by Tessa Bailey and all I remember about this is Melanie from L to the Any recommended it and I think it was like less than a dollar and I was like sure I'll toss that on there for when I need some smut which is not very often but it's there in case I need it. Next we have Monster She Wrote. I know this is by Quirk Books and I'm pretty sure that this is about fictional monsters and it sounds right up my alley. I also have something called Monstrosity and I don't know anything about this but the cover is really pretty. Speaking of not knowing anything about it, I also have music from another world. What is it? Who is it by? I don't know. Next we have my unedited year of writing. This is a writing manual. I would like to get back into writing. It's been a while. There was that, just that one time that I wrote a book and uh, yeah, I should maybe try that again. Next we have Night Owls in Summer Sky. This is about a girl that's just dumped in a summer camp while her mom goes off on a trip with her newest husband. And I think it's queer because I'm pretty sure I found it in the queer section of NetGalley. Next we have Non-Binary Lives. This is a non-fiction book I'm pretty sure about non-binary folk, although it might be short stories. I don't think I would have requested it if it was short stories. I'm pretty sure it's non-fiction. Next I have Not the Girl You Marry, which based on the title alone, I'm assuming is a contemporary romance. I also have Of Curses and Kisses, and I feel like this is probably an Audrey Colthurst book? I've only read one by her, but really, really super enjoyed it, so should get on that Audrey Colther strain. Next we have Only Mostly Devastated, and I have a feeling that this one is the Grease retelling that I asked for, but without a cover, it's really hard to know. I also have Out on Good Behavior by Dahlia Adler. I don't know anything about this one besides I'm pretty sure it's a female-female relationship, and that's all I got. We also have The Paris Library, because again, I'm trash for anything to do with books. We have The Party Upstairs by Lee Connell. I don't know why I would have requested this. I'm assuming it had a really great synopsis, but I'm not exactly a party person, so maybe there's like a murder at the party and we're trying to figure it out. I have no idea. Next I have something called Pomegranate. I know that this is one that I purchased. I can't remember who recommended it. Can't remember what it's about. I think it actually might be a retelling, like a Persephone retelling maybe. 
Don't take my word for it though, because clearly I know nothing. I also have The Pursuit of Miss Heartbreak Hotel. No idea what this is. I have The Con Queen, which is a novel which has to do with one of the previous novels I talked about. Uh, one is the first in the series, one is the second, and I believe I asked for the second in the series from NetGalley, got it, and then realized it was a second in a series. So I then went to NetGalley to see if they had the first one, and they did. So I have both of them, have not read them, trash. Next we have queer baiting and fandom, and I want to read this for obvious reasons. We also have Rebel Girls, which I can only assume is feminist as fuck, so I would like to read it. We also have Royal Holiday by Jasmine Guillory. This is about a girl who goes off to London to do something. I feel like she's part of a wedding crew or she's photographing it or something like that. I just really like Jasmine Guillory, so I figured I'd probably like this. I also have Sculpt Yourself by Savvy, who is a fellow booktuber, and I picked it up because Savvy is a fellow booktuber. I also have Smash It by Francesca Simone, who is a fellow YouTuber, and I enjoy her videos, so I want to read her book. I also have The Sound of Stars. I assume based on the title it's sci-fi, but again, I don't have a cover and I don't know who it's by. I also have something called Split Level, must have had a good synopsis, no idea. Based on the cover, it's maybe set in the 70s. I also have Star Mark Rising. I don't know what this is. I know that I bought this one and it just looks badass, so that's probably why I got it. I'm sure somebody recommended it, but I do not remember who. I also have Sword in the Stars, which is the follow-up to Once in Future, and I'm very excited to get to it. I also have Temper. I don't know what it is. It looks like it's probably a dark thriller based on this cover, but I don't know. I also have The Third Rainbow Girl, and the subtitle is The Long Life of a Double Murder in Appalachia, so I'm assuming this is a true crime novel. I also have something called The Time Traveler's Guide to Modern Romance. Sounds good. I probably got it based on the title. I also have The Trial of Lizzie Borden, so there's two different Lizzie books in here that I just have not gotten around to reading. I also have 21 Truths About Love, a list, and this one just seemed quick and like it might be just kind of like something fluffy, something to make you feel good. I'm not entirely sure though. I also have Uncomfortable Labels, which I believe is about gender identity and sexuality identity and that type of thing. I also have something called Unladylike, A Girl's Guide to Wrestling, which I don't know if this is fiction or nonfiction. I kind of hope it's fiction, but if it's nonfiction, I'm gonna learn a lot of things about lady wrestlers that I don't already know because I don't know a lot already. Next we have Unscripted, and I feel like this is either about um, somebody writing a movie or somebody writing a TV show, and I believe there's a romance in there. Can't remember. I also have The Vinyl Underground by Rob Rufus. Yep, that's what that says. This one I'm pretty sure is a historical fiction and that's why I picked it up. We also have The Voting Booth, which I believe is another contemporary romance type of novel. We have Walking to Listen, which is a nonfiction book that I got ages ago and then there was something wrong with the NetGalley app and it didn't actually come to my phone until way, way after I asked for it. And I think it's nonfiction and I don't remember anything else. I also have Water by Emery Gale and I think that this is about mermaids but they're in Saskatchewan, which makes no sense because there's no large bodies of water in Saskatchewan. Like there's not a giant lake that I know about and there's definitely not like an ocean or a sea, but for whatever reason, I feel like it's about mermaids in Saskatchewan. I also have We Are Lost and Found. I feel like this is another queer light historical fiction. By light, I mean it doesn't go back too far. It's like maybe in the 80s or something. I also have We Used to Be Friends by Amy Spaulding, and I have a feeling that this is like very Gilmore Girls-esque. Maybe it's about a friendship breakup, maybe it's about a romantic thing, I'm not entirely sure. I also asked for Wicked As You Wish by Rinch Pecco because I've read one Rinch Pecco. It was based around the same myth that the girl from like The Ring is based on, so that was really cool. I also have the first couple of books in the Bone Witch series, so maybe I should read these before asking for other books, but you ask and sometimes you receive it. I also have The Wives by Taryn Fisher, and all I know about this is it's messed up and the author has the same first name as my best friend. And then the last one on here is something called Your Next, which is ominous. I'm assuming it's a thriller. So yes, obviously I have a problem with not reading the things that I request from NetGalley slash buying things on Kindle just because they're cheap and or they have pretty covers, and then forgetting to read them because out of sight, out of mind. That and I rely really heavily on my library and because things are due back to the library and there's a time limit, 
that messes me up a little bit. So out of all of these books, what should I be reading this month? Let me know about it down in the comments below. On the way down to the comments, if you hit that subscribe button, that would be very nice of you. If you don't really want to leave a comment, but you want to let me know that you are here, either leave me an emoji or a smiley face if you're on your keyboard. You can like and share this as you see fit, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye! Thank you.